For those of you who are taking thesis seminar, I wanted to spend a few minutes recapping week 10. At this point, you should be completing now the participants and the instruments and procedure sections of your method section. Remember that the entire method section should be approximately 500 words. That'll include three sections, the participants, the instruments and procedure, and the third section for data analysis. We're going to have a, our next whole group session on April 12th, and we'll talk about the data analysis. So this will be a section that you're likely to complete either during our break, the last two weeks of April, or uh, when we come back the first week in May. I would suggest trying to do the analysis before we get back or before you return in May so that you can spend that time developing the results and discussion section. Again, we'll talk a little bit more about this in our whole group session. So some things to consider as we get into the fifth of our six weeks to collect our data. So we basically have two more weeks to collect the different data sources to answer our research questions. So remember to triangulate the information as you're collecting data. Make sure that what you're collecting is answering your research questions. So consider the following as different types of data sources. Any questionnaires from teachers, students, administrators, parents, etc. each of those are considered different data sources. Interviews from teachers, students, administrators, parents, etc. are also additional data sources. Each one of those is a separate data source. So it, just between questionnaires and interviews, you have eight possible different data sources that you might consider. Now, some are going to be more appropriate and um, than others. Maybe even some data sources are not going to be possible, but the point here is that you're considering as many different data sources as you're able to collect. Again, seeking out the data sources that are going to be the best options for answering your research questions. Classroom observations is additional data source. Collecting text, audio, and video from teachers in terms of planning or any didactic materials or technologies that they use in class. These are all different data sources. A syllabus, the curriculum, any policies from schools, each one is a different data source that you might consider as part of your data collection. Anything that you collect in the form of text, audio, video from a student in the form of, let's say, homework, any projects that they complete, each of these are different data sources. So just by looking at these different options here, you have a lot of potential, 20 or 30 or so possible data sources. Again, not that you have to collect all of these different sources, but you do need to have at least three in order to triangulate information that relates to your, your research questions. Make sure that if you get some, something interesting from, let's say, a teacher, make sure that you are triangulating that by getting different perspectives from, let's say, either the students, maybe your own perspective from a classroom observation. But again, we need to make sure that we're triangulating information throughout the uh, entire data collection process. Only data obtained from recorded interviews or recorded classroom observations are permitted. Your classroom observations can be either video or audio. In many cases, in fact, in most cases, video is preferred, uh, especially if you're looking at, let's say, verbal, nonverbal communication. Um, anytime you can record a class in the form of a video, you're going to get more information uh, for, for you to analyze. At this point, most of you are not going to need to do an intervention, but if in the event you feel that as you're collecting data, you're not answering your research questions, then you might need to do an intervention. And if you uh, do feel you need to do one, make sure that you're reaching out to me before so that we can discuss it. Each time you collect the data, make sure you analyze it to determine how it answers your research questions and then begin planning on what additional data that you still need.
Make sure that you've received an informed consent form from each of the teachers and use your own discretion whether or not you feel you need an informed consent form for students. And this is going to be especially relevant for students who are children. Maybe, uh, maybe you'll need to even get additional permissions from the schools. Just make sure you're working very closely with the administrators of the school so that you are following the recommendation in terms of uh, the necessary forms in order to collect or use data from, from uh, younger uh, children. So finally here I've included from last week's recap, general information to include in each of the three sections of your method, the participants, the instruments and procedure, and the data, the data analysis. So I'm gonna leave this also for, for this week's uh, recap. So do take a look at this to get some information, get some guidance in terms of what to include in your method section. Again, I would begin developing the method section, the first two sections, primarily the participants and also the instruments and uh, procedure section. And uh, just as a reminder, our next whole group session is scheduled for April 12th at 11 o'clock in the morning and will be in our regular classroom. So I think we'll stop there. Make sure you're reaching out to me if you do have any uh, challenges that you're facing. If you're not sure what the next step is, make sure to see me right away. Otherwise, we'll see everyone in your next tutoring session.